Welcome, everybody. I'm Sven Hosford, and this is another edition of the Journal of Lifestyle Medicine podcast. Today is August 26th. We're heading into the end of summer and Labor Day weekend, and uh, we've got a kind of a short show this week, but uh, lots of good stuff and action-packed as usual. Uh, This podcast, we've got Dr. Dan Wagner. He's a real fixture in the integrated medicine scene here in Pittsburgh, and he's now more regularly out in export at St. Clair Behavioral Health. It's a lifestyle medicine uh, center that we've talked a lot about. And we'll check in with him and uh, we'll talk about the cover story of the next print issue of the magazine, which will be out next week. That's right. Next week, we'll have the fall issue of the print edition of the Journal of Lifestyle Medicine. I've got some really, really interesting articles for you. And we'll have uh, hopefully a lot of those authors on uh, through the fall on here, right here on this podcast. Coming up in uh, next week, actually, Steve Behrman, uh, he is also known as Swami Beyondananda, but he is more than just a prankster. He is also a very smart guy. He's written a book with Bruce Lipton called Spontaneous Evolution. He's going to be in Canton, Ohio, coming up in September, and he'll be right here, right here in front of this microphone uh, next week. And in two weeks, we'll be talking about Tai Chi with Gurney Bolster. We've got an interesting uh, calendar item coming up. We'll talk about that. And in three weeks, Eric Goldman, uh, managing editor of Holistic Primary Care, uh, a really, really nice magazine that's out in waiting rooms uh, in some of the bigger hospitals across the country. So uh, first, we'll take a look at the calendar for this week, looking ahead. Actually, this weekend, not a whole lot going on with the Labor Day holiday, uh, but taking a look into September on the 12th, we have Patty Lemmer's vaccination conversation that's happening at Phipps Conservatory. If you haven't got your tickets yet, this is really going to be an important event. If you're at all interested in the autism spectrum disorders and the very latest science about what's involved there. If you have not seen it yet, you really uh, should go back and watch the podcast we did with Pat- uh, Patty Lemmer this summer. Uh, it's really interesting information, a very calm, uh, scientifically grounded debate, uh, not debate, just a conversation at Phipps Conservatory on September 12th. Uh, go to eventbrite.com and search for Pittsburgh vaccinations. Uh, and then the next day on the 13th is what's on your plate. Uh, that's a wellness event happening at the RMU, uh, sponsored by the Penguins of Post Gazette and Fitzburg, our friend Joe Venari over there at Fitzburg. And you can check out uh, what's on your plate, expo.org. We'll be there with some pop up podcasting. So if you're going to be around, make sure you stop in to say hello and get on one of the podcasts. Coming up on the 19th of September, uh, that's a Friday night, uh, the uh, St. Clair Behavioral Health we talked about is having their annual Celebration of Success, End of Summer Social. It's an evening of uh, socializing, good food, uh, music, drumming, and all sorts of fun, uh, and uh, even a bonfire if the weather holds out. That's the 19th of September. Go to sayclair.com for more details. We're also inviting the Meetup Group. If you're an integrated medicine professional of any sort, uh, be sure to go to meetup.com and look for integrative medicine professionals. On the 25th of September, uh, the event we talked about that Gurn- uh, Gurney Bolster is going to be talking about is uh, Dr. Ramirez hosts a world leader for Tai Chi in good health. And that is uh, Jose Ramirez del Toro, uh, the orthopedic group in Mon Valley Hospital, is going to be hosting Dr. Paul Lam, who is the founder and director of the internationally renowned Tai Chi for Health Institute. Uh, and Gurney is a, a graduate out of there, uh, all around good good gal and uh, teaches Tai Chi around Bethel Park. And we might even have one more guest on with that. Uh, On the 27th of September, if you enjoy the podcast next week, you'll definitely want to go see Swami Beyondananda Friday night, the 27th. Uh, He'll do a little cosmic comedy. And then on, uh, I'm sorry, Saturday night. And then on Sunday, the 28th, He'll be doing a uh, play shop for couples. Steve Behrman is a wonderful guy. On the 1st of October, uh, put this one on your calendar for sure. This is Dr. Uma Puragala, Dr. Kim Hewitt, and Kim Pierce, RD, uh, are having a lifestyle seminar at St. Clair Hospital, the Dunlop Auditorium, uh, and that's from 7 to 9 p.m. They'll be talking about mindful meditation, mindful exercising, 
in mindful plant-based eating. Vegan food sampling uh, goes along with that, and the cost is a whopping $10. So make sure you get registered for that. It's uh, uh, Look on the Meetup group for that one as well. Meetup.com, Integrative Medicine Professionals, if you want to go to that. There's more information about that. Also, uh, coming up, make sure you get this on your calendar if you're a massage professional or a body worker. The November through 2nd through the 4th, it's the Pittsburgh School of Massage Fall Conference for CEs. That's at Seven Springs, Dean Juhan, and uh, some other really good teachers are going to be there. PGHSCHMass.com for details about that. Uh, we will be talking with Dan Wagner about his trip coming up to Ecuador. That happens November 9th through the 19th. A really good opportunity to see uh, uh, amazing jungle uh, uh, habitat, a uh, nature's preserve they're going to be visiting, and also a trip to Vilcabamba, which is one of the uh, blue zones where people regularly live to over 100 years old. That's Dan Wagner's trip to Ecuador, and you can find out more about that on NutraPharmacy.com. Again, that's pharmacy with an F, F-A-R-M-A-C-Y, uh, .com. So we're going to talk to him about that in, uh, well, actually coming up next. So that will do it for the calendar this week. Dr. Dan Wagner is one of the pillars of the lifestyle community here in the Pittsburgh area. Uh, you can check out a video of him on the Lifestyle Medicine Conference that happened back in May. Uh, we have lots of links to that on our site. He is the owner of Nutra Pharmacy in the North Hills. He's been a frequent guest on this podcast, and he's also got the cover story of the next edition of the print version of the Journal of Lifestyle Medicine, and that is on prediabetes and how that might not be such a useful medical, medical diagnosis. So we talked about that and his upcoming trips to Ecuador out at St. Clair today. Let's take a listen. Hey everybody, it's Sven Hosford out at the lovely St. Clair grounds and the St. Clair gazebo here with uh, Dr. Dan Wagner today. Hi, good afternoon, thank you. What do you think of this place? Huh? Yeah, it's beautiful here, it's just so calming and such it's so natural, so it really fits in with the whole practice that Dr. Chaudhry does here with you know, holistic psychiatry, yeah. it's beautiful. So, a little bit of a drive, but uh, it's well worth it and a lot of interesting things happening here, including uh, you're now a regular visitor here. You're once, here once a month, is that right? Yeah, I'm coming once a month, the last Tuesday of every month. So if you'd want to make an appointment, you call the desk here at St. Clair and you can make an appointment with me. I'm usually here from 8.30 to about 3. And I'm also bringing along our Oliga Scan, our new uh, energy machine that sort of very accurately measures minerals in the body, heavy metals, and sort of correlations of different organ systems, like from 0 to 100%, how's your cardiovascular system, how's your immune system, how's your digestive system. So when you look at individuals, it look like the whole system. Very individualistic. And then we can wow. sort of, you know, see somebody's low in magnesium, and we recommend magnesium. Of course, we recommend detoxification programs for people with heavy metals and so forth. Sure. So you'll have uh, also some of the products, some of your handmade products will be here and available too. Yeah, they already are. And we, I bring more each week, so or each month when I'm here. So yeah, they're available. And the staff is learning more and more about how those are used and so I forth. I think so. And, yeah. Well, it seems like a real good fit. And uh, for anybody that wants to come out and see the place for yourself, uh, September 19th, there'll be a little get-together here. Uh, right. It's a Friday evening from 6 to 9, have a little bonfire outside, have some music, some drumming, and uh, food, and just socializing, and storytelling, and all kinds of things like that. Right. So That'll be wonderful. Yeah, yeah. So that'll be September 19th, uh, Friday night here at St. Clair. But uh, the other reason I was happy that you could come on the podcast today was because you've got a couple of really interesting stories in the next issue of our print magazine, the Journal of Lifestyle Medicine. Okay. So let's talk about the first one. Uh, I really love this topic because um, it's poo-pooed so much in traditional medicine a lot of times, but can be such a powerful healing agent if it were only understood. And that's the, the placebo effect. Okay. So let, let's like take a real world situation. I'm, I'm taking a new supplement and I, I'm trying to track how I feel. How do I know whether it's real effects or the placebo effects? Well, how do you know? Is I guess uh, these things aren't always measurable, documented. That's what's kind of exciting, ex exciting about the placebo effect that it's 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 relevant, but it's dismissed by science and medicine because they can't explain it. So I, I think the article that I uh, allude to 
uh, sort of the research I allude to in the article was this British study back in 2000. They had a, a large group of participants who had depression and they were given either a placebo pill, a sugar pill, they were given Paxil or they were given St. John's Wort, a famous herb that's used for mild to moderate depression. Mm -hmm. Well, after the whole year's study, the placebo pill did the best. The drug came in second, and St. John's Wort was a close third. <laughs> but the published article was, Paxil works better than St. John's Wort. It right. only came in second, but they just dismissed it. <laughs> so I think this is an exciting aspect of what we call quantum physics to a degree. And Bruce Lipton is the guy who really has gotten taken this to the next level in his wonderful book called The Biology of Belief. Right. You know, he kind of left orthodoxy medicine. He was teaching in medical school because of things like the placebo effect. He said, well, you know, this is relevant. We have to explain it, but we don't explain it. So it's interesting. So he actually does have uh, a kind of an explanation for that. When you get into the power of intent and how the emotions yeah, actually yeah, do yeah, change yeah. the cell and the DNA, I mean, We've, we've talked a lot of on our podcast about epigenetics. Several of our yeah, guests sure, have sure. brought this up. And actually, we're going to have uh, Steve Behrman on in a couple of weeks. Okay. He's, uh, of course, co-author with Bruce Lipton on yeah. the book uh, Spontaneous Evolution. So. Right. That's another great book. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, it's sort of like uh, the Bible of the new energy medicine. I mean, I have a number of machines that I'm using, and uh, intent is, is a big factor. It's hard to explain, but I'm just telling you it's relevant. I, yeah. I, don't have time to talk about the whole thing, but the sure. intent is very powerful. And the other article you wrote for us is uh, on pre-diabetes and why that yeah. that diagnosis may be more of a myth than an actual uh, something that you could use uh, to to further yourself. Huh? Yeah, I Explain see that in my that. practice, and I believe that because you know we measure things by blood tests, and blood tests are wonderful. But when we look at the A one C. You know, it used to be if you were under like 6.2, eh, you know, you're okay. Now they want you under 5.7. So people that are 5.7 to 6.2 now are labeled pre-diabetic. And if you're over 7.0 on your A1C, which is your average blood sugar over the last three months, it's a good test, it's an accurate test, and you're definitely diabetic. Well, we start to have problems with that classification. And we think that there's a lot of interventions people can make Let's face it, the American diet is high, highly carbohydrates and lots of refined foods and lots of fast foods. So this will lend toward a pre-diabetes. But I, I have problems with people getting treated right away and taking drugs for it. Because what they're doing, you know, you're a little bit pre-diabetic. Your A1C is not where they want you. Let's get you on metformin right away. And metformin is a pretty effective drug, but it's not an easy drug to get off of once you're on. Mm. And they'll tend to just keep it on. So we, we, I, I mentioned this article about certain herbs, supplements. I mean, a lot of this has to do with how the pancreas works, and the pancreas works by two things, secreting insulin to break down sugar, and secreting pancreatic enzymes to break down our foods. So the nutrients that are necessary to make this insulin efficient are magnesium, zinc, chromium, and vitamin C. So just having optimal levels of that could help decrease this problem with prediabetes. I mean, there's other aspects with hypoglycemia, but... I wanted to make people more alert that there are other interventions they can do, of certainly exercise, burn sugar, we're all for that, than just getting on the drug right away. So I think dietary interventions, exercise interventions, and, you know, supplemental interventions. Do you think that a lot of doctors probably don't ask what the diet is or, you know, even something as simple as stopping drinking uh, soda pops oh, yeah. for the average person of course. could take them out of the... Do you think I could take them out of the pre-diabetes range could, if could. they're active? and Because, you know, the work I do overseas, in Nigeria especially, you see thin people uh, who are diabetic or pre-diabetic. Hmm. And I'm not saying heredity doesn't play a part. They have a lot of starch in their diet. Well, you know, they drink these Cokes because it's cheaper than pure water. And the water is very impure over there. You wouldn't want to drink it from the faucet. So, you know, they, coca Cola is actually cheaper than bottled water. Well, you know, if you didn't know any better, why wouldn't you take the Coke? It tastes better. It tastes better, yeah. And it's half the price of pure water. So we think that's a contributing factor, absolutely. So really just some basic, sometimes very easy lifestyle changes can take you right out of that pre-diabetic range. Yeah, I just want people to be aware of this, this, have caution to this new trend in medicine of let's treat the healthy person because they may be unhealthy in the future. In other words, your mom and dad or your family history is high cholesterol and yours is pretty normal. Let's just start treating it because sooner or later, 
you might have high cholesterol or your dad and mom were diabetic. Uh, here, you, even if you're on medication, let's just give you insulin because you'll probably sooner or later need insulin. See, I, I don't buy into that. Yeah. And I think we have to be careful because there's, you know, that's saying that there's no interventions you can make outside of heredity. And we just don't agree with that. Well, that sort of uh, it seems to negate the whole conversation about epigenetics, too, yeah, sure where, you know, according to Bruce Lipton, our, our predisposition for a certain thing is only about 10% of whether we actually get it or not. The other 90% yeah. is the, the environment that we ourselves I would, are in. I would say 15, but probably somewhere in that range. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's very interesting. So we'll look for those two uh, articles coming out in the next issue. No, thank you. We'll be hitting uh, the next, yeah, next uh, week or two. And we also want to talk about a couple of trips that you uh, are okay. going on. If uh, anybody's not familiar, you do the Student Rainforest uh, Fund. It's a trips, yeah. series of trips that you take with uh, pharmacy grad students, uh, mostly from Duquesne or other schools. Well, too. no, we've had 36 colleges and universities oh, involved awesome. in the last 17 years. And these are not just pharmacy students. These are any students interested in in the, 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 you know medicine pretty much we call it the healing arts or something so we've had biology students and pre-med students and we get lots of naturopathic and pharmacy but if some students interested and they're in you know art or we had somebody come in who was uh, learning how to uh, you know uh, become a chef <laughs> came along and they learned a lot too so <laughs> but we want to start taking the adults on this trip so the one coming up here November 9th is 10 days into the Ecuador, Ecuadorian rainforest in the north, and we're going to also spend five days in the southern valleys in the Andes Mountains. We're looking forward to a trip in March. Dates have not exactly been set yet, but we're looking for people interested to go Machu Picchu. It's such a uh, wonderful, wonderful destination and you know, one of those things on many people's bucket lists. So we're going to spend uh, a couple days there, but we're also going to fly into the Amazon in southern Peru and spend days in a Echo Lodge down there that I've been to. That's wonderful. It's mm -hmm. very clean and accommodating. But you're in the middle of the jungle. It's wonderful. So, so this would be a great opportunity for any uh, health food, uh, health professional or wellness professional, yeah. especially that would like Absolutely. to add a few tools to their toolbox. And, uh, and it's not just. I think part of what your story is so interesting is that you know you started with traditional drugs as a pharmacist, and then you kind of wanted to learn what was behind that, and you got into the plants. And then you kind of learned what was behind that, and that is the energy medicine from all these shamans in the forest. So if people really want to get to what's behind it all, yeah. you got to go to talk to the shamans, right? It's a little bit of that evolution. Yeah. And, you know, some of the people coming this year are school teachers, retired school teachers. So you don't have to be in the health professions. You want to enjoy Just curious uh, about life. Yeah, of course, yeah. The, the wonder of the rainforest, the holistic healing. We're going to meet many of the indigenous people, uh, shamans to a degree of... Uh, midwives have great knowledge about the herbs and yeah. so forth uh, so we'll be uh, meeting a lot of interesting people and of course if you haven't seen the rainforest there's nothing like that you yeah. know it's like somebody said the rainforest is green and it certainly is <laughs> <laughs> well you also on your uh, november trip you're going to spend some time in vilcabamba which is one of the blue yes, zones that's the blue zone yeah. Yeah. that's in the southern part vilcabamba is one of the blue zones where people live to be you know in the hundreds uh, Things change as time goes on, just like anything else. A lot of Americans and Europeans are moving down there, but that's because it's such a perfect temperature, and it's about 5,000 feet above sea level, so you're high enough that the free radicals leave the body because of the, the uh, positive ions in the air, mm -hmm. and uh, the food is organic, lots of raw food is... There's no pollution. There's no airplanes going over. Lots of minerals in the water. Yeah, high minerals in the water, and that's yeah. one of the reasons they, these people may live so long. Yeah. So. It's uh, it's a great place to visit, and again, lots of people are moving down there just maybe to spend a couple months a year. Well, I know it was voted uh, a couple of years ago, voted the best place in the world to retire by International Traveler magazine. Well, that's actually Cuenca. Cuenca, Cuenca? is about two hours north of it. Oh, okay, okay. But Cuenca is a larger city. But it's because of all the cultural and music and things like that. So, it's all of those things about the food, but it's also the sense of community. Uh, you know, there's very little loneliness, I think, in that culture, and uh, also they uh, uh, just just being uh, you know just being a part of the community. I think is, is and more important. important is Ecuador is just one of those ideal country, countries to go to. It's called the Ecuador Miracle. Since mm -hmm. 2000, they adopted the U.S. dollar. The government is stable. There's a growing middle class. It's a safe environment. And of course, you have a, a country the size of, say, Colorado, which with incredible diverse 
uh, biodiversity. You can go from the Galapagos to the shorelines, to the rainforest, to the mountains, you know, all within a couple hours. Wow. So it's incredible uh, biospheres that we see. And, and of course, this little country has more bird species than any country in the world. Hmm. Wow. Biodiversity is amazing. Wow. So we're going to experience some of that. Well, I, so I get a hold of me if you are yeah. interested quickly because we're running out of time. <laughs> and, and you can call my uh, number at 412-486-4588 is the phone number, but also email me at dtwherb at gmail.com. My name is Dr. Dan. And it's uh, Nutrapharmacy Farm with an F. Uh, com and studentrainforestfund.org if you want to see the pictures from the last several of the last trips. Well, it's been great having you on the podcast. Oh, thank you. Okay, yeah, thank great. You, Thanks a bunch. All right. See you next time. You too. All right. Bye-bye. That's it from St. Clair today. So that will do it for this week. I want to thank Dan Wagner and uh, the hosts at St. Clair for letting us film out there today. And we'll be sure to see you again next week with Steve Behrman and every Tuesday at 4 o'clock right here on the Journal of Lifestyle Medicine Live. And then we post them on YouTube, iTunes, Spreaker, and Stitcher. This is the Journal of Lifestyle Medicine. And if you are a professional of that is at all interested in anything we've talked about here today, be sure to go to our meetup group, uh, meetup.com, Integrated Medicine Professionals. So that'll do it for this week. Yins, be careful out there.